present time, we're at T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Shuttle launch control explaining that uh, the planned hold of one hour looks like it will uh, go in as scheduled. An ice check will be done during that time. Walter, I know that you have seen so many of these fuelings and refuelings for uh, spacecraft here. Uh, but uh, again, it's one of those things that, I, frankly, as many times as I see it, I never cease to be uh, impressed by the amount of knowledge, technical skill, equipment. And uh, we saw that marvelous uh, picture just a few moments ago, live, from out there, uh, trying to uh, refuel. There it is, uh, a close-up, right at the top of the external tank of the uh, space shuttle. The two tanks, the forward one holds 143,000 gallons of liquid oxygen, the aft holds 383,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen. And uh, they're well along with the refueling. I say refueling because last week they fueled it, and then when they didn't get up, they had to take the fuel out. We've gone uh, past that point now, haven't we, Dan, uh, where uh, any scrub now would be a 48-hour delay. Since they've begun to fuel this, this rocket, we, they have to pump it clean again. Uh, if they don't go this morning. So uh, so we've gone beyond that point. If this doesn't get off this morning, and that window is kind of narrow this morning since we delayed to 10 o'clock and we got to get off by 12.10 or something like that. Uh, so uh, uh, now we're in a, uh, that mode where, <laughs> you can talk space very quick, uh, that, that mode where, where uh, if, uh, if we get a uh, cancellation this morning or postponement is a 48 hour hold. Well, it's, it, we are in that period. Once they start to, to put the fuel in, uh, then if anything goes wrong, uh, we're certainly well past that point now. If, if anything uh, drastic goes wrong now, it will be at least a two-day delay. And you're quite right, uh, and it's worth uh, mentioning, and as we go along this morning to continue to mention, that uh, if any other delay develops today, not necessarily a, a disastrous as far as the launch is concerned, they are dealing with a, a, a much smaller window. And that's one reason that they'd originally scheduled the launch for today at 7.30, of course, as Leo Krupp constantly reminds us, and uh, justifiably so, that one of the things is they always, for landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California, hopefully on Tuesday, they don't want to have to land too late in the afternoon because the winds get up on that desert floor, and that's just another complication nobody wants uh, to have on landing. We had mentioned uh, just before the voice of NASA told us uh, the launch details uh, as of this moment, so many of us grew up at a time when it was uh, always referred to as the space race and the race always being with the Soviets and having said that the Soviets had the 100 launches last year averaging two a week uh, the race has changed hasn't it Western Europe has a uh, space program uh, countries of Western Europe Japan and China want one it's a it's it's a whole different era now and the Soviets have done something very smart, I think, in a public relations standpoint. And that's this business of training astronauts from other countries, or cosmonauts in their case, uh, to go along with them. They've taken uh, several from Eastern Europe, one Cuban. Uh, they've, got, uh, they've got a French uh, trainee. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's pretty good public relations from, on their, from their standpoint. What they're doing out there in space, it seems quite clear, is they're building a, getting ready to build a space station. Uh, it looks like they're going to beat us to the space station. That is a, a permanent station out there that will be, uh, that will be replenished in personnel and material uh, supplies, logistical supplies and so forth by uh, old-fashioned, uh, compared to this vehicle, old-fashioned uh, space uh, vehicles uh, boosted on the top of a single rocket. Uh, I, I don't think there's very much doubt from what we see now that they're just about to put the first links of that thing together. And one reason they need a space station, there are a lot of reasons they need it and want it, uh, military reasons among others, but one reason that they need that space station is uh, that, as we mentioned, that much of their equipment doesn't last very long out in space and uh, that they'd like to have the space station to go up there uh, and observe some, I suppose, but they don't have the capability with the space station of making the kind of repairs in, in space with the satellites that we will have once the shuttle gets operating. No, but it depends on what they do with their space station as to how valuable it, it really will be, uh, how soon it'll be valuable. It'll certainly be valuable in, any, in any case, but uh, if it's a uh, launch platform for uh, deeper space uh, operations, uh, even though comparatively near space, for instance, uh, synchronous orbit, 22,500 miles, uh, if they if they use the station for that, uh, they've got a capability then of uh, repairing 
communication satellites, which we don't have with this vehicle until we begin to uh, get a second uh, uh, a little truck uh, in the bay of the big truck that we can go on out to, to, to that height, which we'll be able to do. That's part of the future planning for the thing. Uh, also, what can they, what uh, will they be able to launch from a uh, spa uh, space station? They can launch um, all kinds of smaller uh, vehicles with great capability that don't have to be uh, subjected to Earth atmosphere and uh, a boost from an Earth pad. Uh, so the advantages of getting a space station out there are, are quite considerable to them. If you had your druthers, would you rather have a space shuttle or a space station? I'd want to have both. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think uh, uh, space shuttle was certainly uh, is it should be the first order priority because then you can build your station a lot more s uh, simply than you can with the with the non uh, returnable uh, vehicle. Uh, but uh, yeah, excuse yeah. me, what are the voices sure. of sure. NASA's sure. up again? The astronauts are suiting up. Uh, this is live as the astronauts go into the uh, suit up room. Of the first shuttle mission going into the suiting room with them. Uh, they'll be in the suiting room uh, for uh, approximately a half hour or so. The first step will be to uh, affix the biomedical sensors to their bodies and then they will don their spacesuits, uh, check out the helmet connections, the glove connections, and make sure they're ready for their trip to the pad. Things going uh, smoothly here in the countdown as we look towards a liftoff on time at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The count in a one-hour hold at T minus two hours, five minutes. This is shuttle launch control. Uh, Dan, I noticed that uh, uh, the voice of shuttle control didn't mention this time the little glitch that they mentioned a moment ago. Uh, he passed over rather quickly, but uh, uh, it was in transmission of data from onboard computers back to Mila, the control here, Merritt Island. Uh, that, I would think, would be a little more significant than he maybe laid it on us uh, a little while ago, since that could be the same box problem. Uh, it, it could be. I, mean, I, I have no no information on this. No, but underscore but, the word you know, could. And yeah, it's that one he of those things. Uh, I think you. I, I think your ears began to prick up a little bit when they say we've got a little problem here, but we don't think it's significant at this time. Well, that's the way they all start. I don't want to be <laughs> be a, a, a gloomsayer here because I don't think that's that's likely. But but anyway, that's the way it all starts. It's like that pilot, you know, and you're sitting there at the end of the runway, and he says, uh, well, we got a little indication here on our board that uh, we got a little problem. Now, we don't think it's anything but the light. We're just going to tap the light a little bit. Well, that's fine, but if you frequently know you're going to end up going back to the terminal. And, uh, I hope that doesn't happen this morning. Well, but we'll be uh, keeping our ears and our eyes open, uh, keeping in mind that they don't have as uh, big a window today scheduled launch at 10 a.m. Eastern time that uh, if anything develops and we will <coughs> italicize make all caps that word if if anything uh, develops uh, they wouldn't have as long today to work it out uh, as they would have had if, had they been proceeding on a 730 launch time but all we know officially at the moment is that the countdown is proceeding uh, as was expected we're now in the middle of a one-hour hold everything officially is on schedule and we still expect the launch uh, roughly three hours and 17 minutes from now our CBS News coverage of the effort to get uh, Space uh, Shuttle Columbia up this morning will continue in a moment. The Space Shuttle Columbia has survived uh, launch Eve Gremlins. Uh, two new black boxes, part of the complicated electronic system, flown in from California. One of them has been put in place, and as best uh, we can determine, everything is on schedule and uh, working perfectly. However, Leo Krupp. Uh, Walter Cronkite mentioned uh, just the possibility from what has been said the last uh, half hour that maybe an yet another problem is developing. Do you think so? I don't think so, Dan. That was not a, uh, a spacecraft problem. That was a ground communications transmission problem, and uh, it should not affect the launch. Money, I noticed that a few clouds are beginning to move in, and the, the wind has moved up to an estimated uh, 10 or 11 knots now. But uh, the voice of uh, launch control said, uh, what, 20 minutes ago that the weather uh, didn't appear to be a problem. I still think it looks good. Uh, we're within limits. Well, it's been almost seven months since the, uh, that's the uh, engage, and it's certainly uh, the wind, uh, while it has been picking up uh, since dawn broke here uh, over the Kennedy Space Center. The weather at the Edwards Air Force uh, 
base, uh, scattered clouds, but fine visibility and no rain. Now, the reason anyone's talking about Edwards Air Force Base in California is because if the launch goes off today and they get up and it would develop any difficulty, one of the sites that they'd want to come down to uh, it would be at Edwards Air Force Base, the first site back here at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, they could do that, uh, but beyond a certain point, then there are other alternate possible landing sites. And so they just have to keep an eye on the weather everywhere. And the weather here certainly looks good. The countdown uh, looks good. Everything at the moment uh, looks good. I'll take uh, Leo Krupp and Bonnie Dunbar, our astronaut consultant and our longtime test pilot. I'll take your word for it for the moment. But I have learned over a long career that you don't bet against Walter Cronkite very often. Walter didn't say there was a problem. He did say, pick up your ears, because they're beginning to talk like there might be a problem developing.